Okay. Um, at 7.02, maybe we'll get started. I'm Nicole Swern. I'm here as your facilitator tonight. Um, and I'll just uh, begin with uh, the land acknowledgement, which I'm going to give on behalf of the William Baker District Planning Team. And it's one way that we can, as settler descendants and non-Indigenous Canadians, offer our proper respect to um, the Indigenous peoples um, on Turtle Island. I understand that it's always more meaningful to give an acknowledgement when you put yourself in it. Um, so a new part of my introduction speaks to the fact that I'm a Scarborough baby, um, a child of immigrants. My mom came from East Germany. My dad uh, my side came from Germany. When we do that, and I do that, it helps remind me and all of us that we um, need to be mindful of the treaties that are still in place and the peoples that lived here long before us. The William Baker lands are covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Um, they are the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, as well as the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And we know today that Toronto is home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. And I encourage you, wherever you are, uh, to learn about and acknowledge the traditional territory you're in. We have one participant this afternoon uh, who is participating from Nairobi. That would be a different story there. Um, get to know more about the treaties signed in that traditional territory and get to know the peoples um, that are important. Um, maybe what I'll do quickly is just ask if you have muted yourself um, to mute yourself while we while I just review the agenda. Perfect. We can't. I'm going to give it a try. Um, Matthew, do you see anybody else that we could mute? Uh, sorry, Rena. Rena, are you able to mute yourself by any chance? There we go. I think I've just okay. done it. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, as I said, I'm Nicole Swern and part of the facilitation team. I'm here with my colleagues, Ruth and Matthew. And our job is to help facilitate the discussion, not to advocate for any particular outcome. And it's in that spirit um, that we are working with Canada Lands on this project. And, and that's how we do our job with all of the projects we work on. We never advocate for outcomes. We always advocate for, for process. Um, the plan for tonight is really to brief you on all of the hard work that Canada Lands and their team has been doing uh, since the second round of consultation on William Baker and um, to get your feedback on it. What do you uh, think about the ideas as emerging? Do you have any suggested refinements or comments? And we, as I said, had a public meeting um, like this at noon today um, that went super well. And we also had some meetings with um, particular uh, organizations in the area who have been paying a lot of attention to the process, both the Duke Heights um, business improvement area as well as, as the Wilson Village improvement area, business improvement area, the Downsy Lands Community Voice Association, and I see some members here today, um, as well as the York Centre Senior Steering Committee, and I see Elizabeth here and Josie, um, who uh, we've met with previously as well. So some of the folks on the call um, will be seeing the presentation um, for uh, maybe the second time, and um, that's fantastic also. We always encourage people to come as often as they can and want in order to, in order to ask questions um, and share their thoughts. The other thing is that notice for the meeting went out to uh, everybody that lives within one kilometer of the site. Um, there were ads in papers. Um, there was promotion through the Downsy Lands newsletter, outreach through um, stakeholder groups. Um, we have a project contact database and also through social media. So we're hoping that um, that uh, we, uh, we did a good job there in terms of getting the word out. So the plan for tonight. Um, there will be um, a presentation. It'll be in a couple of parts. And we'll take a pause in the middle in case people have questions or comments on the first part. And then we'll get the team to deliver the second part. And then we'll have sort of as much time as we need at the end um, for feedback and, and if there are any other, other questions or comments. Um, and we'll take a detailed summary. And we'll send you that summary in draft of the feedback that we receive. And um, you will have a chance to make sure that we've got it right. And then once we finalized it, those will all be online. The presentation you receive will also and we're also recording this. So that will be a bit of And feedback can from Brazil from there. Uh, so if you don't get what you want to say out tonight, then happy if you uh, share your thoughts into the future. 
So I, I covered uh, a lot of ground quickly, um, but maybe what we'll do now is just get the team to introduce themselves and, and I'll ask the participants to introduce themselves too. Um, I'll start uh, with you, James, and um, now, and so we'll go to the consultants and then to um, the facilitators and then the city, um, as well as the participants. Thanks, Nicole. I'm James Cox. I'm a senior director with the Canada Lands Company, responsible for the Ontario region, and I'm leading the William Baker development. And I'm very thankful that you're spending your evening with us, and we're excited to present our district plan to you. Nana. Hi there, my name is Manon Lapense. I'm the Director of Corporate Communications at Canada Lands Company, supporting James in this project and happy to be here tonight. Si nous avons des francophones ce soir en ligne avec nous, il me fera plaisir de répondre à vos questions en français si vous n'avez, ou encore une fois, vous pouvez communiquer avec moi directement à info arabasque à cc.ca. Merci. Merci, Manon. Um, some of you, you can also hear a ringing in the background. Folks, it's Hi, can you tell Josie that I'm not hearing anything? I don't. I'm going to uh, just use my executive authority to mute on the side, maybe, um, so that we don't get too much uh, feedback as we as we work through this. Um, okay, uh, Donna, Jim, Gord, Amy, please say hello. Hi, I'm Donna Hind. I'm a partner at the Planning Partnership, and the Planning Partnership. <laughs> is preparing the district plan. We are planners, we're landscape architects, and we are urban designers. Thank you. Jim, Jim Dugan, I'm uh, with Dugan Associates, and we're working on the natural heritage and tree pre uh, preservation components. Great, Gord, then Amy. Gord, you're muted. Amy, and then Gord. <laughs> Everybody can get in the habit of it. Hi, I'm Amy Jang. Um, I'm a, a senior associate with BA Group. We are the transportation consultants on this project. Thanks, Amy. Gord. Uh, Gord Patterson, a counterpoint engineering with civil engineers, so sewers, water mains, and stormwater management. Thanks, Gord. Maybe Matthew and then Ruth? Yeah, I'm Matthew Wheatley. I'm part of the facilitation team, um, as Nicole mentioned, working with uh, Nicole and Ruth. Hi, I'm Ruth Blay. I'm part of the facilitation team as well. We'll be supporting on the summary as well. Great. Um, we have a few folks from the city on the line. Um, ben, uh, do you want to um, start us off? And then maybe we'll we'll get um, Hector, Itakin, Adam, um, maybe to, to jump in. Hello, everybody. My name is Ben DeRamo. I'm a planner with the City of Toronto North York District. I would love to show you my mo November mustache or November mustache, but uh, apparently our video is not working anymore. Uh, I'm looking forward to working uh, to bring William Baker uh, to fruition. Thanks, Ben. Um, Hector, I talk and Adam, do you guys want to say hi? I'm going to end with you, Councillor, so you can move straight into your remarks. But um, do you want to maybe as part of your team? Perfect. I talk to Mamadi from Councillor Pasternak's office here. Great. Great. Thanks, Hector Alonso from the office of James Pasternak. And uh, I'm Adam. I'm also with Councillor Pasternak's office. Okay. So maybe we'll go to all of the um, members of the public that have joined us. It looks like we have a good turnout. Um, I'll start with Dan. I'm just going to work uh, alphabetically down the list. So Dan and then Elizabeth. Um, and then uh, we'll just uh, keep scrolling from there. Dan, do you want to say hi and use it as an opportunity to try out your camera if you want? muting and unmuting yourself, um, turn it over to you. Hi, so uh, I'm Dan Hammerschlag. I'm actually with the city as well. I'm with Urban Forestry, Ravine and Natural Feature Protection. Nice, okay, good, thanks. Elizabeth. <sighs> okay, I'll come back. Um, uh, Josie, you wanna go? Hello, Josie, I am part of the Apple Association in the area. And I'm a resident here in North York. All right, thank you. I've got Marcelo, Rina. Um, do you want to say hi? Sure. So, hello, everyone. Bonsoir. Marcelo Gomez Wickstern, VP uh, Corporate Comms at Canada's Company, actually. And uh, happy to support uh, the real estate team um, with this project. So, nice to see you all. Okay, great. Thanks for coming, Rina.
Rena, you still with us? I'm going to just uh, try unmuting you here. Let's give it a try. There's a should be a button at the bottom of the middle of your screen to just try and un unmute. Okay, we'll go. Elizabeth, we missed you a minute ago. Um, we'll come back to you. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself and then I'll keep moving my way down the list? Okay, maybe not. We're, we're going to manage our technology issues. I've got Roseanne and then Slaw, Victor, Vincent. Hi, I'm Rosanna, longtime Downsview resident, and I wish I could speak French as beautifully as Manon does. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that in my retirement, is learn French. Thank you. Thanks. I know it's beautiful. When she talks, it's beautiful. I think so, too. Um, Sla, and then Victor, and then Vincent. Do you want to say hi? Hi there. Uh, my name is uh, Yaroslav or Slav. It's a wow. Slav. Slav. easy peasy. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I'm Ukrainian like you. Uh, I also uh, work for the city of Toronto uh, in urban forestry, uh, ravine protection, and along with Dan Hammerschlag. And I'm here to uh, listen along because we have great interest in uh, protecting the wonderful wood lots. Uh, that are in the William Baker uh, district. We will be reviewing uh, the proposal uh, from CDC. And so we're just here, Dan and I are just here to listen to what everybody's got to say. Okay, nice to meet you. Um, I can't speak one word of Ukrainian, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you. <laughs> um, okay, Victor and then Vincent, and then I'll come back to see if we can get Elizabeth or Rena. Um, but if not, we'll, we will trust hopefully that they can hear us. Um, Victor and Vincent. Uh, hi, it's Victor. Uh, thank you for inviting me to the to the audio. And I'm a resident of uh, of the area as well. I'm gonna be moving the Dansville Park condos, so I wanted to uh, be informed. That's why nice. I decided to join. Good idea. Thanks for joining. And uh, last but not least, Vincent. Hi, I'm uh, Vincent. I'm a resident of uh, the Stanley Green neighborhood in Downsview Lands. I'm a recent uh, urban planning grad from U of T, and I'm also uh, a member of the DLCVA, uh, along with Rosanna and Josie and several other people. Downsview Lands Community Voice Association. If you're not up for the up, up for the lingo, oh, lingo. I see you, Evan. Alfio. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? I see you uh, up at the top of the screen now. We'll see if we can unmute or sorry to make you get up there. Yeah, hi, I'm Alfio Magnanelli. Uh, you can call me and Mary. and Mary, my wife. You can call me Al. Okay. I'm just I'm just a concerned resident in the Stanley Green neighborhood. Great. Thank you for joining us. And you look more comfortable than anybody else. I'm jealous of your setup. It's fantastic. Um, thanks for joining us, Al and Mary. Uh, so let me just see if there's anybody else um, that we've that's joined us since we got since we've been uh, starting here. Elizabeth, is your do you is your mic working? Matthew, is it, have they given you any calls or no? Okay. Rena, any chance your, your mic is working? You might need to just hit the unmute in the bottom in the middle. And worst comes to worst, we'll, we'll follow up after. Okay. We'll leave it at that for now. And then Matthew, I'm not sure if, if um, Rena can give you a call or if it, did we address this? Did we have the problem with this issue before maybe? Yeah, I'll see if I can follow up with both Elizabeth and uh, Rena to see where we're going. Okay. Perfect. Thanks everybody. Last but not least, Councillor Pasternak, you've been very patient. I just 
you know, it's nice to get the kinks out while we're just starting. Um, over to you for uh, for remarks. Great. Well, thank you very much, Nicole, and good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, I've been your local councillor in the downtown area for a little under two years. I was the councillor over in the Ward 10 for two terms for eight years. And then, as everybody seems to know, that uh, the two wards were merged together. And it's been a great honour to serve you over the last uh, couple of years. I chair the Infrastructure and Environment Committee and I chair uh, North York Community Council. And uh, if I had any more chairs, I'd have a dining room set. Um, as, your, as your local representative, it's my responsibility to listen, to learn, and to take your voice to our planning department, um, to the applicants, uh, to Canada Lands, and make sure that your voice is heard. And that's one of the reasons we're having this uh, event tonight. It's important uh, that we stick to some key principles, preservation of the word lot, uh, continued advocation for a community center, and then if anything is built here, that there be a, a seniors village with affordable senior housing, wraparound services and supports. Um, it's it's there's 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 no silly questions in 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 a uh, an evening like tonight. I've been to many of these consultations. I urge you all to ask uh, any question that comes to mind, and uh, the city staff or Canada Lands will 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 answer that. It's important that we have um, respect for the historical stable communities uh, that surround um, this application, and of course that uh, are at the heart of the Downsview Lands. So um, I urge you, uh, and I, I specifically welcome the down, down to your lands voice, uh, um, community voice. We've been very active on the file for many, many years, and it's great to see uh, many of the members of that organization uh, here this evening. If at the end of the evening um, you forgot to ask the question or you say, oh, you, oh, I forgot to ask about that, you can always call my office, uh, Hector and Itakin and Adam are on the line. Uh, we're all here to help and to advocate and to make sure all your questions and concerns are addressed. So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to share a few minutes. Thank you very much for, for carving out um, uh, you know, your evening to be part of this important discussion. And I look forward to uh, working with you uh, in the months and years ahead. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I think we'll hand it straight over to uh, James and Donna to uh, deliver um, the update on the work they've been doing. And I'm just going to ask everybody to mute themselves um, while they present, and we can unmute when we uh, get to a pause, the, the, the pause in the middle of the presentation, and, and that'll be a chance to ask questions also. So, over to you, Donna. Thanks, Nicole. James. Yeah, I just want to start off by thanking Councillor Pasternak. We, we certainly appreciate how busy you are. So devoting your time, your staff's time, and very fortunate that you were able to take part in all the stakeholder group conversations last week. Um, as I mentioned, we're really excited to be here tonight and to have a chance to present our emerging district plan to you and, and to get feedback. As the councillor mentioned, that's really important to us. Uh, so we want to he hear your feedback tonight and, and throughout the process. Uh, the emerging plan is based on feedback we've received over the last year and a half, and I think you'll find that's reflected in the district plan. In terms of our agenda, we're going to start with where we are in the process. We're going to talk about what we've heard from the community and the stakeholders. We're going to refresh you on our guiding principles. We're going to present to you the emerging district plan land use concept, and then we want to peel back some of the layers. So we want to talk about the layers involving the woodlot and its preservation and the connections. We want to talk about the neighborhood focus and the hub of activity and the, and the focus around seniors. We want to talk about residential land use built form and affordable housing, the community benefits that come with William Baker. And then we want to end off with phasing and next steps. We've designed the agenda, so there's going to be a break in the middle for questions. So please feel free to ask any questions or clarification, share any comments, and then you'll have the opportunity at the end of the meeting as well. So in terms of where we are in the process, we first went out to the community in early 2019, and we designed a, a process where we would go out in three phases to inform a district plan. We first went out in the spring, 2019, and that was about getting ideas on key directions. We went back out last fall and through the winter with phase two, and that was about testing concept options. 
And then here we are at phase three, and that's about presenting our emerging concept plan. After tonight, we're going to hold public comments open for about a month. And based on the community feedback and the stakeholder feedback we get, we're going to refine our district plan. We're going to make a submission to the city of Toronto in early 2021. And from that standpoint, there will be then a, a roughly a two year process, a city led process through to approvals. It'll be a district plan for the entire neighborhood and rezoning and draft plan of subdivision, subdivision for the phase one lands, so the south lands. So you're looking at roughly 2023 before there's any uh, shovel in the ground, if you will. So in terms of William Baker, we're looking to implement the city's official plan and the Downsview Area Secondary Plan. You'll see two schedules on the right-hand side. The top right one is a land use schedule that comes out of the secondary plan. And, and what it imagines William Baker as is largely apartment neighborhoods with mixed use opportunities for mixed use along Keel. And it's centered around a park and a natural heritage area, which is the woodland. And the image and the schedule on the bottom right is the road schedule that comes out of the secondary plan. So it provides for a few internal roads serving William Baker. In terms of what a district plan is, it's essentially a framework plan that touches on land use, touches on parks, open space and connections, touches on character, public roads and phasing as well. And, and there's a number of studies that inform a district plan. They include sustainability, natural heritage, affordable housing, You've got community services and facilities. You get into the planning and the urban design. There's more technical documents from transportation to servicing. And there's also a Swerhan team who are putting together a public engagement report, which will provide a strategy and reflect a lot of the input we've received through this process from you. This is the guiding principles a lot of you saw through our phase two consultation. And our guiding principles are really about establishing and helping us guide William Baker to be a model and showcase neighborhood for the area. Uh, they were based on the Downs URA secondary plan and they were based on community input and stakeholder feedback we received out of the phase one consultation. Into phase two, they informed our concept options and they're still guiding us and providing a, an evaluation tool for the emerging plan. Uh, just quickly, some of those guiding principles include creating a resilient, sustainable neighborhood, a place for all, including seniors, providing a well-connected network of mobility options, providing a range of housing options, so that includes affordable options and includes seniors options, creating a neighborhood focus to support community life, designing the parks and the woodlot as the focus of the neighborhood. In terms of the inputs into the district plan and our decision making, there, there's a number of different groups and I want to get into them a little bit and, and talk about their roles. It includes the public and the community, includes the stakeholder and the public interest groups. We've got the technical experts, a lot of which are online today. We've got the City of Toronto as well. Uh, a lot of staff are on the call today. They're, they're an approval authority, but they've also got a lot of the policies and the guidelines that help shape William Baker. And so our role at Canada Lands is to effectively take all the inputs we're getting from all these groups and find a, a, a balance of, it, uh, of those interests and create a viable plan when it comes to William Baker. So at this stage, I'd like to hand it over to Donna Hind uh, with the planning partnership. She's going to talk about the community feedback we received from phase two and then get into our emerging district plan. Thanks, James. As James mentioned in the first couple of slides, we've um, been having conversations with the community for several, several months now. We had our first session back in June 2019. We came in November 2019 and shared three concept options with the community and asked for your thoughts on the individual concept options. We've also had pop-up events, uh, specific stakeholder meetings with which uh, many of you on the call have participated in them. Uh, Nicole's team have received emails and telephone calls. So there's been many uh, ways that we've been trying to reach out to the community. So after we received the input on the concept options back in no November and December, the early part of this year, we sat back and we looked at 
everything that people have been talking to us about. What we were hearing was that there was support for protecting the woodlot and for improving pedestrian access through the William Baker neighborhood. There was support for tall buildings and for appropriate density. People all also said, let's hope that there is a variety of building types so that the William Baker neighborhood is not just all one thing. We heard support for local shops, for services, for places to meet, for a place for people to get groceries. We heard strong advocacy for providing places for seniors to live and be active. And there were suggestions for a seniors village. We also heard strong support for the City of Toronto Community Centre close to William Baker and in Downsview Park. We heard the full spectrum of opinion with respect to affordable housing. So some advocated for it and that it be well built and well managed. Some said they didn't want affordable housing in William Baker, and then others said they wanted affordable housing as long as it was targeted to a specific group. So in November, and then after November posted on the project webpage, we presented three concept options, and we said specifically we're not looking to choose in its entirety option one, two, or three, but we want to understand the parts that you're liking and not liking of option one, two, and three. When we asked you about cons or option one, we heard support for locating the retail and commercial uses here at Keel and Shepherd, where my cursor is. We heard support for locating lots of people in that location so it, the, the people could support the uses in the community focus, but also to support the bus services in this area of the study area. When we looked at option two, we heard support for this piece of open space that was illustrated on that option. And it was a piece of open space that we uh, suggested in this option to connect the woodlot and the open space that's uh, suggested around it in the light green through the new piece of open space to Downsview Park. And then with respect to option three, we heard support for locating as much residential development as possible close to the teach close to the subway and go station. Um, and then we also heard support on this concept that was exploring ideas to include children's playground equipment, pavilions in the open space around the woodlots. So what this enabled us to do was to take the best parts of option one, option two, and option three, and present tonight the emerging district plan concept. So what you're seeing on this illustration, first I'm gonna start with the green space, and I'm gonna come back to the green space shortly, but we're distributing green space across the entire neighborhood with an open space focus in the north, with open space in the areas around the woodlot, as was uh, suggested in the Downsview Area Secondary Plan. And then we brought forward the idea of an open space link at the south end of the neighborhood as presented on the second option of the previous slide. We are preserving the natural heritage elements of the woodlot. We're providing a mix of housing that I'm going to come back to again in the presentation. The mix of housing is illustrated by the various shades of brown, gold, and beige. And then we brought forward the idea of locating the neighborhood focus in the southwest corner of the William Baker neighborhood at the Keel and Shepherd intersection. So it can be close to bus services and it can also support the retail and commercial uses that already exist on Keel. I'm going to hand it back over to James. Thanks, Donna. So Donna has walked you through the land use plan for the district plan. And what I'd like to talk to you about is the Canada lands vision for the property. Our vision at William Baker is for a complete community, just as the councillor had mentioned as championing. And it's a place for all. For us, the key features of the neighbourhood are that it aligns with the city's plan, provide the woodlot, the parks, the new trails, and the new pedestrian bridge across to serve Downsview Park. It's a walkable community near transit. We provide shops and services to support new residents. 
and existing residents as well as seniors. We provide for a mix of housing types and affordability, including for seniors. We have space for community uses and we have land for a new community center right across the road. And we're proposing that the district plan provide a framework for William Baker to be inclusive and provide a place, a village, and a hub of activity for all. We've heard from people about the importance of this place being for intergenerational, a uh, place where all people can come together. Now, when we refer to the hub, we're not referring to a singular building. We're referring to a hub of activity. So within that hub, you've got housing, you know, different options, as I mentioned, affordable seniors, you've got the medical uses, you've got shops, you've got the community uses, all within walking distance and serving all people, including seniors. Over the last several months, we've undertaken a lot of work from a market standpoint. We've talked to not-for-profit and for-profit seniors providers, and we've learned a lot about what makes a successful seniors development. And what we're finding is it's important that the housing be close to the walking trails and parks and some of those uses. And what we've also uncovered is in our market research that the mixed use and the retail commercial serve everybody, not just seniors. And I'll hand it over to you again, Donna. Thanks, James. Now we're gonna look at the woodlot, the parks and the pedestrian bridge uh, in focused. So we've stripped away the other elements from the land use concept and we're just showing the elements that relate to green space. So what you're seeing here is that first and foremost, the significant natural heritage elements of the woodlot will be preserved and enhanced. And that is indicated in dark green. What you're seeing is the small, smaller uh, neighborhood parks located one in the north end to provide a focus for the neighborhood. Park and open space around the woodlot that's being preserved and protected. And then the new park and open space at the south end. So distributed right across north to south. What you're seeing with this uh, dashed line is a multi-use trail to make connection from the north to the south to provide a safe way for people of all abilities to go uh, walking and cycling and use the trail to connect right up to Downsview Park. You're seeing in the dashed green line is an idea about green multimodal streets <clears throat> that would be part of a <clears throat> completely accessible and safe trail and sidewalk network through the William Baker neighborhood. My energy efficient lights going off. The photographs on the right are uh, the character and quality of the spaces that we're imagining in the green space system. So the multi-use trail through the woodlot, what the woodlot might feel like as a place for quiet contemplation and reflection. And that this, the light green areas between the woodlot might be an appropriate location for an adventure, play, an adventure playground. Uh, the team is completing an ecological management plan to ensure the resiliency of the William Baker neighborhood. The plan is based on four fundamental principles to protect its ecological features, to enhance the features, to increase resiliency, to integrate the features into the surrounding neighborhood, and then to tell everyone why it's important to be preserving and protecting the woodlot and uh, in, in, in Barking on restoration activities, uh, renaturalization activities in and around the woodlot. This drawing, so the base air photo is an historic air photo of the William Baker neighborhood. Uh, I can't get my lights on. Of the William Baker neighborhood when it had military housing on the site. So you can see the housing here. And what we've done is we've overlaid the land use concept onto that air photo so that you can see more precisely how we've really carefully, strategically, almost surgically located uh, some of the land uses around the woodlot to make sure that we're preserving and protecting the woodlot. We are not planning anything in the woodlot. So the gold area, the medium density residential, the beige is the lower density residential, this 
this light green is that green space at the south end of the neighborhood, the light beige on the uh, west side of Shepherd. So you can see how it relates specifically to where there was housing and the manicured lawns when it existed as a military housing area. The woodlot will absolutely be enhanced and re-naturalized. Let me show you now a view. So here's the eyeball. We're looking from the woodlot. So imagine it's at your back and we're looking south through that new piece of open space at the south end of the neighborhood. We're looking along that multi-use trail for walking and cycling. We're looking at a park that could be an ideal location for children's playground equipment, for children's playground. And then we're looking at a park that's flanked by development, residential developments, to make sure there's lots of eyes on the space to make sure it's safe. I'm gonna hand it back over to Nicole. Great, thanks uh, James and Donna. So we're, we're partway through the presentation. There are still um, many slides to go related to the um, neighborhood focus and land use and, and community services and, and phasing as you can see there on the slide. But <clears throat> we really wanted to take a quick pause to see if anybody had any questions or comments or reaction to um, what, you've, what you've heard already. And I'm, I'm especially interested, I know, from the community, we have Elizabeth and Rena and Josie and Rosanna, uh, Victor, Vincent, Al, and Mary. Um, if any of you, uh, in particular, want to want to jump in um, uh, at this point, I'm happy to take your questions. And, and maybe Donna, if you drop your drop the presentation for a quick second, I can eyeball some of these people. So you can either put your hand up just in front of your your camera like that, um, and let me know. Um, and uh, you can also um, raise your hand in the participant list if, if you're more comfortable doing that. Or just unmute yourself and let me know you want to jump in. Vincent, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have to do this. Uh, yeah, just a few things uh, that uh, I hadn't thought of last uh, consultation this 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 afternoon. Okay, um, go ahead. The grocery store that's planned for the community hub. Um, so, for it's one thing having affordable housing in an, in a neighborhood. It's another thing having affordable amenities and and stores, right? Like, if you make the housing affordable, but all the stores are are too expensive, then eventually people are going to leave if they're low income. Uh, how can we ensure that specifically the grocery store is going to be an affordable one and also the rest of the, the stores around there will be affordable? Um, James, I'll, I'll hand it over to you and then I'll, I'll also just frame it to say uh, it also sounds like a piece of advice. I mean, it's framed as make sure it is affordable, um, but he's interested. At, Vincent, if I'm, I'm hearing you well. Yeah, but so James, what are the tools at your disposal about um, uh, ensuring that the retail and the grocery store are, are, are gonna be affordable? Right, so, so I guess I'll back up a little bit and, and Vincent, in terms of your question, the, for us, the district plan and the importance of the land use plan is that we've got the flexibility to allow for these uses, allow for the retail and the mix of use. And part of that is also having the uh, the right population down at the Keel and Shepherd intersection. So having that area of neighborhood focus and, and that intensity to support. Our market economic consultants are telling us you need a population of roughly 6,000 to 8,000 people to serve a 20 to 30,000 square foot small grocery store. So that for us is, is kind of step number one. I, I would say the next several months for us, you know, it, it's important that we undertake uh, more retail commercial uh, study and, and do some market study around just that is identifying how that, you know, what type of retail commercial we can attract, what type of grocery we can attract and, and how that keeps to be affordable. Because I think it's important that it serve the local population, whether it's the new resident population at William Baker or whether it's the existing one. There's a there's a good population around that Keelan Shepherd intersection and certainly it's got to hit the mark. Uh, but I would say that, you know, for us, it, it's really undertaking that work and, and coming up with the right retail strategy. 
sorry, what, what kind of strategies uh, are used in developments like these to attract affordable retail? Usually just for example. Well, I think you, one of the keys is for us, it's having the right anchor. And we've identified through our market consultants, uh, a small grocer would be the right anchor. I think we we would look to, you know, do some informal market sound, you know, do some some research to kind of create that path. You know, but we're early underway in terms of the the district plan, the land use plan. Important that we get our application in, and then we start to identify those kind of users that can fit within that vision. And I think Vincent, the point is well is well is well taken that mm -hmm. um, in order for it, the idea would be, if I understand you well, to have an offer that is affordable um, and um, in encouraging Canada lands to have a strategy to attract affordable. Um, and it sounds like James, you're saying you have every intention of thinking that over uh, and working on that, um, not only prior to your submission, but after the submission goes in. Is that if I heard you right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, Anyone else have a question at this point, Vincent? I under I, I appreciate that there's some people you're referring to a slide that that maybe some folks haven't even seen yet with the grocery store on it. Um, but don't worry about it. I see Al with his hand up. Um, Al, go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, got up to unmute. Um, I, think so. I guess I have three questions. First, what is uh, the the uh, proposed plan there shows uh, two roads going over to Shepherd. I believe that's uh, the extension of Grand Ravine going across and Dove House going across to Shepherd. Is that correct? Maybe Donna, do you mind pulling up that um, the the plan and, and making point to it? So he's wondering if the if the road is connecting to Dove House and Grand Ravine. Anyway, we'll pull it up, um, Al, but yeah, are you just yeah. making sure yeah, that that's is. the case? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. So you have, just correct me if I'm mistaken, but the top one, I think, is that the Grand Ravine extension going to Fairford? James is nodding. Yep, sounds like it. I think that's right. Look to me like it's Grand Ravine. Is that correct? It's Grand Ravine. Okay. Yeah. So the north one connects to Grand Ravine. The Middle one through the central portion of the site is to Dove House. That's Dove House, okay. And uh, okay, that's first question. And the second one is along those new roads, we have three new roads there, uh, and including Shepherd, are bike lanes going to be included? Okay, so go ahead. That, that's a good question for Amy. Amy, are bike lanes uh, going to be included on the three new roads, including Shepherd? Um, Shepherd, uh, uh, not, um, no, um, but bike lanes, um, either boulevard lanes or, um, or lanes on either side will be included on the, the three east-west roads as well as the north-south road that you see. Um, we're also showing a multi-use path along the east side of Keel, um, across the property frontage. And there's okay. also trails through the park, uh, through the woodlot, sorry, in the middle. Okay, so that will allow people, uh to take those various bike lanes, like going along Keel or along the new roads that are being built within the area there to go to the subway station, correct? Uh, yes, yeah, that, that is the idea, yeah. Okay, without having one on Shepherd, right? Um, yeah, we're not currently showing anything on Shepherd. Um, that doesn't mean that it won't in the future. Um, we're providing a certain amount of widening along Shepherd to the city, um, and so in the future, there may be room there to provide something. Um, there's a there's a great difference. The 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 um, the William Baker uh, property, the site itself, is is higher than the rest of Shepherd. So there's actually to get down to Shepherd, you kind of have to go down. So the idea is to keep people within the community and then get them um, to the north side um, within the community before they get to uh, to the transit. But that doesn't preclude future bike facilities on Shepherd. Sure. Okay, thank you. And my third question is, uh, I noticed that there are some high rise residential there, 13 plus stories. Is that, first of all, is that within the limit for this area, considering 
the airport we have. I know that's a, I know that whole airport area is going to be redeveloped, but I don't know if the airport's going to stay there or not. But uh, is the high rise residential that's planned or, or proposed? I mean, at thirteen plus stories, is that really uh, a good idea? Well, and, and one, I think your first question is: it is it within the is it allowed? Um, uh, within the policy framework, and then maybe the second point is: is it a good idea? Um, I don't know, Donna or James, do you want to jump in um, in terms of the framework you're working within? James, you want me to start? Sure. sure. Okay. Um, yes, it's allowed, and yes, uh, we think it makes sense. We heard loud and clear from lots of people participating in the process that they wanted uh, us to plan for getting as many people as we could living close to the subway and go station and also living in the uh, neighborhood focus so it could support the commercial and retail uses medical spaces that are being proposed in the neighborhood focus. James. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'll add is, is as Donna says, we we're conforming to the city's plans uh, with respect to height. What we're also trying to do is create a little bit of variety. We heard it was important to people that there's a variety of built form, you know, from high rise, mid rise to low rise. And we're trying to reflect that across the site and, and have you know, lower rise areas that are adjacent to the woodlot and to the parks and then taller elements, as Donna had said, next to the transit station or the bus services. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did, did I hear you say that 13 story high rise is allowed now? Like, no, the I think that's what Donna, yeah, I think that's what Donna said. It's permitted, yes. Okay. But when you say high rise, it's not, are you, ta you're talking 13 plus, but are you talking 40, 50, 60 stories, or are you talking something more moderate as far as a high rise? I think this will be more moderate for for us. It's important to have human scale. Uh, this isn't downtown, and, right. and it won't reflect a, a downtown downtown height, if you will. Great, thank you. It's sort of be keeping with uh, the high rise that we have right on Keel Street now, like just north of Shepherd. Those high rises there, right? Yeah, we're certainly looking at our, our surrounding context in terms of drawing from in, in terms of heights and and the right built form and the right mix. Okay, thank you. Great. Thanks, you guys. Um, I know that some of this gets some of the comments that have been raised are addressed in some of the upcoming in the upcoming slides. Is there anybody that wants to weigh in on the sort of the, the woodlot um, or the, the green um, park space that Don has just presented? Uh, Don, of course, you can comment on it or question about it later. Um, but anybody want to jump in now before we uh, before we go to the second part of the presentation? And I, I see we may have a couple of new folks um, that have joined. So uh, welcome, um, Kevin, and um, maybe it's just Kevin. Uh, we're just in the middle of a presentation. Um, we took a pause for some questions, and and we're going to go to the second half of it. Um, so and last call. Anybody want to jump in now, or should we turn, go to the the second part of the presentation? I think we're good. Okay, Donna, James, over to you um, to wrap. Oh, Vincent, did you put your hand up? Sorry, I missed you. You didn't, okay. We're good. Okay, James, Donna. Donna, you're on mute. There we go. I'm going to switch now and talk about the neighborhood focus and the uh, hub of activities. So what you're seeing on the screen is a sketch, an illustration. This is Keel in the foreground and this is Shepherd curving up to the north. And so we're looking at that north east intersection of Keel and Shepherd. And this is where the neighborhood focus is, where the greatest variety of uses come together. It's where there's shopping and open space and community facilities and residential uses all focused in the neighborhood focus. This entire area is probably within a radius of 200 meters. So it's everything's within an easy, easy walk. 
the photographs on the bottom of the page are illustrating the character and quality of the spaces that we're imagining when we're drawing and planning uh, the work for William Baker. So we're imagining the buildings have uses on the ground floor to activate that, that sidewalk. There's a space where cafes and restaurants can spill over. It becomes a social center for people that are living in the William Baker neighborhood. This illustration, uh, I'm going to get you oriented here in the bottom right of the slide. So the eyeball, we're looking west on that new east-west street that we just talked about uh, previously. We're looking towards uh, Keel Street in the distance. And what we're seeing in the foreground is that new park at the south end of the neighborhood. We're seeing the trail that goes through the new park. We're seeing uh, the park is flanked by residential uses. So we're seeing a, a part of the neighborhood where it's very safe, lots of eyes on the park, lots of eyes on the street. And we're looking in the distance at the where the greatest uh, mix of uses and the highest density of residential occurs in the background. This is the view that um, Vincent was talking about earlier, where we're, we're illustrating that corner of Keel and Shepherd, and we're having a look at what this development is right on the corner. And you'll see that it says small grocery. This is a really important component of the plan for Canada lands. They want to deliver on this. They think there's a market for it, and it's a very important part of the vision. So it says specifically small grocery. The, the illustration is also showing the pedestrian life that we're imagining on the street level. We know that Shepherd is a big street. We're purposefully showing a wide landscape buffer that separates the area um, for outdoor cafes and shops and restaurants from the busyness of the street. I'm going to switch now and talk about residential land uses. We've already talked a little bit about this. So this diagram is showing the various shades of dark brown to beige, and it shows the distribution of the various building forms and types across the William Baker neighborhood. So we are purposefully uh, responding to what we've heard about trying to get as many people as we can living close to the GO station and the subway station and at the Southwest uh, neighborhood focus to support the commercial and retail uses that we're planning. But we also heard, let's make sure we have a variety of building types and forms in the William Baker neighborhood. So that's where you see the gold that's uh, intended to be uh, mid rise buildings that form a transition from the higher buildings to the lower buildings, the beige are uh, predominantly ground contact buildings, maybe up to four stories, and we're locating them internal to the neighborhood, tucking them in close to open spaces and making sure that they are uh, giving the whole neighborhood that variety of building types that people are asking for. So from four stories up to the tall buildings. When we uh, were looking through our photo libraries and trying to assemble some photographs that we thought depicted the kind of character and quality we were imagining for William Baker, we've got this one in the top left that are townhouses and stacked townhouses, taller buildings that have ground floor podiums to make sure that we're bringing pedestrian scale to the street edge. And then the buildings that mid rise buildings that could be up to eight stories, but also are making sure it has an interesting um, first floor to activate that the level at the sidewalk. Going to just turn it over to James to talk about the last few slides. Great. Thanks, Donna. Uh, the city of Toronto's definition of affordability means that affordable housing doesn't exceed 30% of a household gross income. For Canada Lands, this is really important as affordable housing helps individuals, families, and seniors to live in our communities. You know, everyday people getting a housing that's affordable. Now, Canada Lands, we're committed to providing at least 10% of all units as affordable units, including a minimum of 50% of those to be affordable rental. We're also exploring opportunities to do additional affordable housing through our work with CMHC as part of the Federal Land Initiative. And the bottom image is coming out of the 
uh, City of Toronto Housing TO Action Plan, and it provides the spectrum of housing. And what we're trying to demonstrate is the range of housing options that are being considered as part of the William Baker. So that includes some of the seniors' houses, seniors' housing, including long-term care and assisted care. It includes affordable rental, affordable home ownership, and then you've also got the market rental and the market home ownership. In terms of community facilities and services, there's a number of community benefits that are being proposed as part of William Baker. We've covered a lot of them. They include preservation and enhancement of the woodlot. They include affordable housing, including options for seniors, a daycare, which I know is a key counselor uh, priority, the retail and commercial uses, including those geared to seniors, as we talked about, and the new pedestrian bridge and cycling bridge across Shepherd to serve Downsview Park. In addition, I wanted to mention a couple other things. We've been in talks with the Toronto Catholic District School Board about potentially locating an elementary school at William Baker and furthering the idea of a complete community. And we're also championing the lands at the southeast corner of Keelan Shepherd for a future community center site, which is another thing that the councillor is championing. In terms of phasing, uh, the William Baker neighborhood won't be built overnight. It's going to be implemented over many years and over many phases. Right now, we're focusing on the phase one, which is the Southland. So we're looking at a district plan for the entire neighborhood. But as I mentioned, a rezoning and a draft plan of subdivision for the Southlands. And that includes the neighborhood focus area and the hub of activity. Future phases would include the north part of the property. In terms of next steps. Uh, we're here today uh, presenting the emerging concept plan. We're looking to get feedback. We're holding that feedback uh, comment period open until mid-December. At that time, we'll look to refine our district plan based on community and stakeholder feedback. Early in the new year, we'll be submitting to the city the application for the district plan and the rezoning and the draft plan, as I mentioned, for the phase one lands. And from that standpoint, or from that point on, there will be a, roughly a two-year process, a city-led process, uh, where there will be plenty of opportunity for community engagement, consultation meetings, through to approvals. And I'll turn it back to you, Nicole. Thank you, uh, James and Donna. Um, so uh, now we have, uh, I know we've got a, a good hour left and, and we can easily use all that time with, I think, the participants that have joined us. Welcome to Kevin and, and Clara, who uh, I think joined either just before or, or during that second half of the presentation. Um, really, the, the team is super interested to understand um, what you think about their emerging ideas, the emerging uh, district plan. Um, and if you have any suggested refinements you'd like the, to, them to consider, um, uh, to, to tell us what those are. Um, uh, and uh, if you have any questions, um, that's this is also a good time, good time to ask. So. Uh, Rosanna, start us off. Um, I just think it's I just think it's important um, to tell everyone or let everyone know how many total units are being planned for William Baker, and if you can pull up uh, the slide with um, showing the buildings in the high rise and low rise. So, how many units are planned for the corner of Kill and Shepherd, and how many units are planned for the subway area? Great, Donna. Do you mind putting up the just the the plan? And James, you want to speak to to the units? I know it's come up at some of our previous meetings, so I, I think it's a good point. Absolutely, uh, it's a great question, Rosanna. In, in terms of the city secondary plan, it provides for a density of two times coverage, and what that equates to is something just uh, around four million square feet of space. And when you look at it in terms of units, uh, it's roughly plus or minus 3,500 units. And that depends on what your average bedroom size is. When we're talking about the, the phase one lands or the south phase lands, we're looking at about 1,500 units and about 1,000 units are concentrated in that area you see with the neighborhood focus area, that kind of hub of activity. And a lot of the reason it's located there, as, as Donna talked about, it's locating it where you've got the existing infrastructure. You've got the bus services, both on Shepherd and Keel. You've got the retail commercial on the west side of Keel and those strip plazas. You've got the existing population. 
And so for us, it's critical to have the mass at that corner to be able to deliver on those community uses, the retail commercial uses, the small grocery. So, so that's the reason it's located there and it's roughly about a thousand units in that location. Okay. Oh, you said a thousand units in this location. So that would mean 2,500 units up near the subway or up towards uh, uh, east, right? On Shepherd? Yes. Yeah, yeah rough, roughly about that. Okay, um, James, did you just say phase one was one? I Sorry, just to make sure we yes. got it clear. I heard you say sure. phase one is 1,500. And right. that there so would be about 1,000 in the neighborhood um, focus area. And so... <laughs> If that's 3,500, if that's 1,500 total, that means 2,000 to the north. Rosanna, is that what you said? I, I just they want to make sure I got it right. More or less. So okay. it's 1,500 down at Kale and Shepherd and, oh, 2,000 up up here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But in just, phase one, you're, about, you're saying in phase one, we will get the 1,000 down at Kale and Shepherd. Within the neighborhood focus, within that kind of radius you see up on the emerging district plan, about a thousand units within that area, and then another five hundred east as you wrap around up Shepherd. So total phase one would be fifteen hundred units, and then for okay. the north piece, you're looking at plus or minus two thousand units. Okay, thanks, James. Okay, no problem, Roseanne. Great, and sometimes I might miss it too. And I, in the end, we try and take super good notes, and I know you guys will. Fix it if we make a mistake, but I like I, no time like the present to make sure we got it right. Al, jump in. Uh, yeah, Al, so having, yeah. Ha having talked about the um, increase in density, like uh, we're looking at 3,500 additional units, right? Uh, from from Keel and Shepherd all the way along to um, across the subway station, which is the extension of Grand Ravine, right? So we're looking at like 3,500 units, right? Yeah, James um, is nodding. But yeah, yeah so when, has any uh, transportation capacity studies been done where there it can accommodate that? So, so I can touch on a high level and then maybe if, if, if Ben or anyone else wants to add on. But <laughs> Excuse so me. And besides, besides the transportation, uh, the other infrastructure too, like sewers and water. Yep. Yeah, so maybe I can kick it off, Al, because okay. I think it's a great question. And, you know, what I do want to clarify for the group is, is we're not looking to amend the city's plan. Uh, we're happy with the density provided. We're not looking to increase that density. Uh, back around when the current secondary plan was approved, that was in 2011, there was a transportation master plan that fed into that as well as a functional service study. And that supported uh, that the the roads could handle uh, that level of density and that number of units. And it also did the same for servicing. So that's it at a high level. I mean, we have we have city staff on the call with us. We have the city planner and Ben Naremo. We've also got the, uh, you know, Amy, who's with uh, our transportation consultant and Gord, who, who's our servicing consultant, if, if you have more technical questions. Basically, long story short is that you're putting in the number of units that were in the city secondary plan and the city secondary plan determined that they're through their transportation and functional service plan studies at that time, that that, that level of population was supportable or that the number of people living there, those number of units was supportable. Is that, is that, the, is that right? That's correct. We're, we're looking to implement the city secondary plan. Okay, does that help, um, Al, or do you want some or more de details useful there? No, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, can I ch can I chime in for a sec? Sorry. Yeah, go Ben, and then I'll go to Vincent. Hi, it's it's Ben from uh, from the city. Uh, just to Alfield's uh, point, uh, we're not looking at adding any new density than what was previously approved in the secondary plan. Just to to reiterate James' point, so. So this has already been been taken into account by the city's various studies in the past. Again, it'll be it'll be re reviewed as we, we as we review the application when it comes in to make sure we can fine tune it. Uh, but just for everybody's benefit, we're not we're not increasing what was envisioned in the previous 
document for the sec of the secondary plan. So does that mean, um, in terms of transportation, for instance, does that mean uh, along Shepherd there's not going to be any uh, requirement for reconstruction of uh, Shepherd, like widening or anything like that? Well, they'll, they'll be it'll be reviewed, but you know many things have changed in, in the last, uh, you know, <laughs> many things have changed in the last eight months uh, in this world of ours. But certainly, you know, we have the GO station now in place. There's, there's the uh, Young University line has been extended, so we have improved infrastructure from a transit perspective that will inform the review of of the uh, the application when it comes in. There may be some some you know touching up here and there, but nothing significant, Alfie. And I'll just add to Ben's comment. I mean, my understanding is there is a, a short segment of Shepherd which will be subject to, uh, it's roughly a two and a half meter widening on the north side of the entire land. So that would be the William Baker development. I see. Okay. Like Amy referred to earlier. Nicole? Yes. Sure. Um, Vincent, if Elizabeth jumps in just because I can oh, from her no, as well. I, I can wait. I can wait. I didn't know that some other. Okay, yeah, I don't mind going first. Uh, on the same thread, and Anna? Yeah. Uh, the north core. Well, the good thing about high rise is it permits mixed use on the bottom, right? Like, and you can still have plenty of density and plenty of units. Um, I'm kind of curious why that area doesn't have mixed use there. I mean, it's on like the north, it's, it's, it borders the Duke Heights BIA and the future um, Shepherd Chesquid neighborhood that's planned, which are both employment, employment industrial, or I don't know what Shepherd Chesquid's gonna be, but I know it's gonna be employment, which means like there's gonna be a lot of labor there that needs to be served in terms of like, you know, that that, that could, provide uh, traffic like a, a consumers for that neighborhood or for that corner. Um, why, why is it that all of the mixed use is planned simply along Keel and, uh, and, and nothing on Shepherd or at that corner where it's right beside a, a, a transit station too? So it seems like an ideal place to have mixed use. Do you want to pull up the, the, ske the, the schedule just um, from this? Or, or the map, Donna, that shows um, so that everybody's on the same page. You can see the hash marks on the bottom of the map where it's um, identified mixed use. And, and, and Vincent, if I understand you well, you're looking up to the northeast part of the site close to the subway station, right? And why is that not right. mixed use? Good. So who's the best person to answer that? Is that something Canada plans or the city wants to jump in? Um, who, who should take that? I, I can kick it off and then we can turn it over to Donna. Uh, but it's a, it's a great observation and, and the, the land use designation where you see the pockets of mixed use along Keel that comes from the city secondary plan. But for us at Canada Lands, we're looking to maximize the opportunities for mixed use. And so we do show some up uh, going to the, the Northeast part of the site adjacent to where you have Downsview Park Station, and we think there's gonna be a market for that. Part of the reason we're starting down at the phase one lands is because it's got the existing infrastructure, it's got the population. It's gonna take time for the, the area to the north to develop, uh, but we think certainly it'll, it'll accommodate that type of mixed use as well. And we've also identified hopefully an opportunity on that east-west central street. Um, so from our perspective, you know, there, there are those opportunities and we're looking to uh, create them. Great. And on that note, also, um, you know, with the Duke Heights BIA and the um, uh, Shepherd Chesswood neighborhood, I know that CLC is very much focused on integration between the different Downsview lands. Um, how are you guys planning on encouraging that that kind of integration? I mean, beyond I guess uh, the future streets that are planned to go into those neighborhoods, um, because I mean integration is more than just transportation. It's also, you know, retail serving multiple areas, right? 
Um, yep. Yeah, so I'm just curious. And also, um, like, uh, in, as far as the bike paths go, uh, how are you planning on integrating that with the larger bike network around uh, William Baker, if, if at all? So maybe I can kick it off and then I'll turn it over to Donna for the, the integration in terms of the bikes. But, you know, some great observations, Vincent, and we, we've been talking with the Duke Heights BIA uh, group for almost two years now and trying to understand a little bit more about their employment area and how we best serve it. And I think what you talked about, you know, it's our retail commercial serving the employment area. It also go, goes beyond that. It, it's having a range of housing options, including affordable housing options to um, provide for their workers. What we've done is we've we've talked to the city planning department about how to best transition and provide those connections. So that's gonna be something that's studied through the application uh, in terms of what's the best land use uh, to transition to the employment area to the north, north and what's the best way to connect it. So those are, those are things that will be studied through the application process. And Donna, maybe I can turn it over to you in terms of the do you have any comments around the bike connections as well? Yeah, I was going to suggest punting that to Amy for the cycling. Sure, yeah. And another um, transportation, yep. Yeah, uh, well, when we're looking at the um, the bike infrastructure, one of the key things that we do look at is how does it connect to everywhere else? Because it doesn't make sense to have just internal bike connections. Um, on all, so as I mentioned earlier, on all of the new roads that we're building, um, there are uh, bicycle facilities on them. The east-west roads in particular will connect to the rest of the Downsview area to the east, and that area is going through, um, as you know, a, a redevelopment process. Um, and, and, um, and the idea is that all of those roads and, and bike facilities will connect to the, the, the wider area. Um, the bike lane, the bike facility on the east side of Kiel, um, that connects further to the south as well. Um, and also, um, I just want to point out that there's a pedestrian and cyclist bridge um, that's shown across Shepherd, um, where the the where the cursor is right now. So that's an existing bridge, but that will be re um, replaced with a dedicated pedestrian cycling bridge to get people directly from Will and Baker and into Downsview Park. Um, so the idea is to provide as much integration as possible. Okay, thanks, Amy. Elizabeth, thanks for waiting. Over to you. Yes, hi. Um, apparently, I didn't have audio now. I don't have video, but anyway, I'm fine with everything. Are you hearing? Everything is okay on your side? You hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you, yeah? no problem. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, first of all, I, I wanted to thank you, Donna and James, for that that we are seeing. Uh, on the lower right corner numbers, larger and bolder. Uh, well, could be bigger for our seniors. <laughs> anyway, that's wonderful. And also, I would like to thank you for addressing the comments from last week that we had. I, I presume because I still didn't go there inside that Woodlot was uh, originally pictures from loaded pictures from from William Baker. So that's wonderful news for to all of us. I would like to talk to James uh, uh, and make a comment more and to hear your comments about, about phasing and also um, about this first one, obviously, which we are very interested to see happen the, the fastest way. So uh, I wonder how uh, you, you imagine phasing. So, and this is also, uh, and how you would like to address this uh, scheduling this 1500 units on Hill and Shepherd? Because, as we know, first of all, from the income perspective, uh, you know, 1500 means 10% uh, for the city as affordable or more. Are you scheduling this this way or will be scheduling? The second thing is, if you have, uh, in general, in phase one, 1,500 units, so let's say 1,000 in this particular call corner, uh, are you able and you plan to schedule uh, how many one-bedroom units, two-bedroom units, three-bedroom units? As we know, the trend downtown and everywhere in the city is to have larger units these days. Which is actually when you are describing, uh, you know, a senior's corner, not maybe preference. 
So uh, I would like to elaborate, uh, ask you to elaborate on that, how you are imagining this. And second thing I wanted to say about phasing. Uh, this is when you start and you are beautifully showing, you know, connection uh, in this, uh, you know, um, dashed uh, circle uh, that on the bottom of Shepard, we have a, maybe a little lighter red color future community center. And for this community center, you know, everybody waits like crazy for years. So my question to you is, if you are including this, uh, obviously south of Shepard and Hill uh, community center, are you planning in this phase one, the encouraging now North Crest to help us, you know, how, who will help us to build and finance community center and how? What is your concept for this phase one that maybe ideally it would be to, to build parallelly at the same time south corner of, of hill uh, of shepherd and north corner of shepherd maybe maybe this is the way i don't know i'm just asking you to elaborate on that so Pete, I, I heard three questions there there elizabeth um and maybe we'll do them in in order um just to keep track um the first one was the question around phase one and the 1500 units and james were you thinking that 10 percent or more of those would be affordable Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to uh, answer the questions and, and great questions, Elizabeth. Uh, maybe while I'm talking, if, if Donna can put up the phasing schedule, because I think it'll give people a little bit of a visual cue. Uh, so in terms of the phasing, you know, 1500 units, it doesn't get delivered overnight. I think that was some of my messaging around the phasing. And, and when you look at abs market absorption considerations, you know, that'll happen incrementally. I think in terms of the affordable housing, and this stems right from the city uh, policies, they look to to have that reflected up front during all phases. So it's not a case where you build out all the market and you leave the affordable to the last bit. The city is going to look for us and Canada Lands wants to deliver this lockstep with the rest of the community. I think for the other piece, for us delivering a complete community, we want to see as much happen concurrently as possible. And so that's delivering on a mix. And, and I think that's where this is different than do, just doing, for instance, a straight condo development. You have an opportunity to deliver seniors concurrently with affordable, concurrently with market. And, and I think that's what can make real successful communities uh, when you deliver all those up front and those will support the mixed use and, and the, the retail commercial use. So I think that answers maybe the first question you had. In, in terms of the unit sizes, you know, we're, we're certainly encouraging family size units, larger units, uh, two and three bedroom units. You know, we understand the Downs U market. Uh, this isn't downtown. This isn't a primarily, you know, investor type of neighborhood. These are people that want to live in the neighborhood. These are people that want to, you know, enjoy the amenities. Uh, a lot of the people we've met have been people that are, you know, coming back to live in Downsview or they've grown up in the area and they're now buying their own homes and they're having families and they want to locate places like William Baker. So for us, we very much see this having a lot of two and three bedroom units and, and on that larger side, as you mentioned. In terms of the community center question, uh, you know, for us, you know, we'd love to see the community center delivered sooner than later. I know that's certainly something that Councillor Pasternak's interest in and championing is how can we fast track that in terms of the city's capital planning and capital budget. You know, with Canada Lands, we're, we're committed, and I believe North Crest as well are committed to supporting that new facility in whatever way we can, whether that's helping with the, the plans and the designs or whether it's potentially looking at options like front-ending it and having, you know, neighborhoods like William Baker contribute to that facility. Uh, you know, the councillor might have something to add on that, but that's, uh, you know, that's uh, maybe gives you a little bit of an introduction on the community center. So you didn't had any, any, you know, uh, conversations yet with Northcrest about how they can be, let's say, uh, vitally more integrated with what's going on at William Baker. 
Yes, Canner Lands is working with Northcrest and talking with Northcrest, just as the city and the council are. And I think everyone's collaboratively trying to figure out how to advance uh, that that facility. Okay, I have I have two more questions. Little one, James. One is I lost last week where you your thoughts are about the location for the school, the Catholic school. Sure. I, I don't I don't know where where you will plan to locate the school if you will plan, you know, so if you can find that again. Yeah, absolutely. So the I think I mentioned and just so everyone's aware, we've been We've initiated some discussions with the Toronto Catholic School Board, and, and they're very much interested in locating an elementary school at Downsview and potentially within William Baker. So we've had a couple of meetings to date. We're supposed to meet before the holiday break, and I think that's going to start to talk about potential locations. Uh, the Catholic School Board has certain criteria. I think one of those criteria, they want to have uh, a school site that's adjacent to a park or an open space. And so that will drive a little bit of where they're interested in. I think the other piece will be, you know, we'll explore options that are in the south end and the north end and, and see, you know, what their preferences are. But we're early on in those discussions, but I think it's it's a perfect time in that it, it it's happening early enough in the planning phase and, you know, at the introduction of our, our application into the city. So, can I read your answer as for now that you don't know this yet where the school will be located? No, that that'll be um, subject to discussions uh, with the Catholic School Board, and, and as I mentioned, they've got certain criteria. Uh, so we'll be looking at a few. Yeah, a few, yeah. I'm, few I'm asking only because I'm pressuring you a little bit because you know the the school is could be very great thing for seniors, but could be also not so great. That's why. The, this question from me and also Elizabeth, do you have some advice for Canada lands on where they consider putting the school or not putting the school? I mean, the other day yeah, you were I mean, suggesting I mean, that. Yes, I have, but you know, it's maybe this is another consideration to talk because, you know, I, I have some uh, studies, you know, uh, with them studies and with neuroscience, you know, certain, you know, what actually and how, how behavioral change could be for seniors and both ways, right? So I think we can talk this later when James would allocate better the place for the school kind of. It's, I think too early, simply what I've learned from James now. But okay. uh, I'm I just gonna, you have one more question I'm because I also wanna flag, I'll, 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 I'll give the mic back to you, I guess the, the airwaves back to you in one second. But I also just want to flag that we haven't heard from Victor, Josie, Rena, Kevin, or Clara. And I want to do make sure that I open um, a window or a door to people who haven't had a chance. So, Elizabeth, it sounds like you have one or two small questions. Well, and a little question, and I can talk with Amy later on if this is not enough time. I would like to talk and discuss with Amy because I understand that she works uh, with more details on developing a biking or walking network and from seniors perspective we would like to know exactly how this works goes because seniors as, as i mentioned a week ago has different limitations safety security speed and stuff so sometimes maybe the walkway will be not could be a little bit away from the biking for a moment or something like this this is only what i wanted to say so it's okay Okay, excellent. Amy, Elizabeth raised it before about making sure that there's no safety issues and conflicts on on trails, um, especially where seniors may be walking and potentially in conflict situations with cyclists. Um, do you want to speak to how you guys are thinking about making sure those how, how to design those networks for, for everybody? Yeah, sure. Um, so all of the facilities that are on the road to so the east west road and north south road and on the east side of Kiel, um, those are separate cycling facilities. In all of those cases, we are also providing separate pedestrian um, sidewalks. So it's not like the two would be integrated. It's that there would be a generous sidewalk um, and then there would also be a generous biking facility. Um, and the city's um, standards for cycling and, and walking facilities have changed over the years and certainly since 2011. And so there are more generous widths that are required now, more protected facilities, um, more uh, in boulevard as opposed to on road facilities for cyclists as well. Um, so those are things that we'll be, we'll be using as, as, as our guidelines for, um, for designing those facilities moving forward. 
Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanna check in to see if, um, I, as I said, I've, I've just got my list of, of Victor or Rena or Clara or Kevin or Joe. Do, do you guys share your thoughts on what you're seeing or hearing? Um, um, I would like to speak if possible. Please, Kevin, go thank ahead. Uh, so thank you for acknowledging my presence, first of all. Um, this is my first uh, time being here. I haven't been involved in any, any prior uh, consultation period. So thank you very much. Um, as was previously mentioned uh, with regards to the Catholic elementary school being built, I've been part of this community for over 20 years. I've been part of the St. Jerome uh, Catholic School. I've been, I graduated from there. And I realized that although it is adjacent to William Baker, it's on the corner of Dove House and Keel, if, I, if that's correct. With the possibility of building a new Catholic school, I am just concerned for that community because um, I feel like for incoming families and for students who are currently enrolled, there might just be there might be more persuasion for those students to, to, to be directed to the new school. And I'm afraid that there might be some implicit assumption that St. Jerome School or the, the Catholic school community might be phased out in that area. And I believe that there's nothing that's stopping them from just using bus routes or, or you know, it's in walking distance of, of St. Jerome Catholic Elementary. And not that I'm against or in opposition of building the new school, I just find it a little bit redundant that there would be two new schools Maybe if maybe if that other school is offering maybe some kind of uh, French immersion or or what have you, and I'm sure this, that this would involve further talks with the TC, TCDSB, but uh, I'm I'm just uh, wondering what are your viewpoints are factoring in the already built uh, Saint Jerome Catholic Elementary School on Dove House and Keel. Kevin, those are great comments, and first of all, thank you for making us your first, and uh, we're happy to have you engage with us on this community. Hopefully you'll be involved in this process moving forward. Uh, my, my understanding simplistically from the Toronto Catholic District School Board is, is they're looking at a new school to accommodate growth and population growth. So it, it uh, isn't my understanding that they're looking to phase out St. Jerome's. I think they're looking at the broader Downsview area and how it's projected to grow over the next 10, 20 years. And so I think they're interested in a new facility. I think through our application process, the Toronto Catholic District School Board, you know, they're a commenting agency, they're circulated, they'll be working very closely with city staff on this as well. Uh, but I think your, your point's a great one, because I think the last thing we want to do is see uh, a new facility created and, and cannibalize an old one, uh, because I think certainly, you know, St. Jerome serves a great function. You know, in my view, it, it's located in a certain location, as you said, Dove House and, and Keel. And so my hope would be a new facility wouldn't be right next to that one. Uh, but, uh, you know, those are great comments that we'll, we'll take under advisement. And Ben DeRamo's on the call, the city planner, so I know he's taking note as well. Thank you. Great, thanks, Kevin. How about um, Victor or Rena or Josie or Clara? Do you guys have any, do you have any comments on what you're hearing? Um, only just because we haven't heard from you yet doesn't mean you have to go. Um, but I want to make space for it. Isn't Rena there? Yeah, I think Rena is still here. Rena is still there. Did you like getting Rena's mic working? Yes, we did a few minutes ago. Rena, you just gotta click the un unmute button there. I'm gonna send you another request. I think Josie's teeing you up. <laughs> I thought she wanted to say something. That's what I <laughs> no problem. Um, Josie, do you have, do you have any thoughts you want to jump in with? Well, I prefer to Rena because we talked about it. She was saying the same thing, so I wouldn't okay. prefer her because it's always Josie saying the same things. But that's okay. I uh, I just uh, I know. I mean, I I do not feel comfortable. With the uh, with the corner of Killer Shepherd, the reason is uh, because I live across the street, so I see that every day. So who's going to be more upset than Josie if things they don't see things? It's a Josie because Josie lives right there. So a uh, little bit yes, the intensification, but I can live. I can live with very tall buildings, and I told you from the beginning, I have no problem with that, and I would prefer that to have more space, but. Because I've been involved with uh, the seniors' village, not the hub. I don't know the difference, but I did read a little bit different, which it's okay. It can be the same thing. That's fine. Uh, I, I am. 
kind I kind of feel responsible because we do participate uh, almost all your uh, you know whenever you call us as uh, association and even with Tavi association we did participate and people knows and the community it's most an older community they don't participate at those meetings so they trust you so when you go around and I do participate a lot of things and knocking on doors uh, you know you kind of feel like I'm telling those people the truth or I'm telling this and then something else gonna come up so especially those days people with this COVID-19 seniors and you know the their children they're really looking at what are they gonna put their parents now if you taking our project and what are we telling you to do I will suggest you to continue with this. If you don't, and I'm not up. No, no, it's gone mute. Can we you hear you? Rena, no. we can hear you. What I'm saying, if you don't you don't proceed with our project at the way it's supposed to be done, because we went through for two years to try to figure out how to you know, uh, serve the community uh, and a little bit better than other places now that are, they're dying. I suggest you just to take it out. I mean, it's not a big deal if the seniors are not at the, at the Killer Shepherd corner. They, they can be somewhere else. So I, for me, I will feel much better because in the future, if this building, it's not what they expected. And, uh, you know, the seniors village, it's not there for what we told them. It's better to know, not be there. We'll put something else in there. That's my opinion, because I did hear people knocking at the door lately. And if you don't do what, what we expected, what are we vision for that point for our seniors, we have to go to our politicians and just like other times either you do it or you fight to go back to the city and then go to you know the OMB and the, we don't want to go through this anymore either we do a right with peaceful and let's get together and discuss or we put something else Akila Shepherd and not the seniors. Josie is the way and, and I'm just making sure because you, you covered a lot of ground and Rena I think your mic is now working too so we might be able to um, also go to Rena to, to understand. Um, but uh, so you said at the beginning, because you live right at Keel and Shepherd, you'll never be happy with the development at Keel and Shepherd. Is that is? No, no, I am happy and I, I, I don't mind the tall buildings. I'm not happy where how this we imagine that place for seniors different than what we've seen. Maybe we didn't see enough yet. Maybe we have to come and, and really look into it more closely we're fine to do that but i'm just telling you we have a big responsibility in our shoulder as associations i can Agreed. tell you that this has happened recently people and are, what's the I, vision that you have that you don't think is ha that you're not seeing what is the vision that you're not seeing i, I just am not seeing that uh, this is going to be safe enough for seniors to be at the corner no okay. way they present it. the way we presented the way we uh, i mean we had elizabeth as an expert as a you know uh, a person it's not just the association that was working for two years on this it was an expert on that we listened to her we accept it we give a support to her but if this doesn't come the way elizabeth is presenting the safe place for seniors i think it's better if you don't put them there Okay, and what part of it is not safe at Keel and Shepherd? Because no, there's... no, not not the way I see the building of building. Keel, and you know, no, I don't think. Uh, and plus, okay. as a nonprofit, because people are dying in the properties, uh, we need a big crest, and big crest is requesting certain things. If this cannot be done, it's not a problem. We're not going to be here to. You know, like we did on the south side, I'm Stanley Green. We just let's work together and we put the seniors on another place. Okay. So if I understand you well, uh, you're not worried about the development at Keel and Shepherd. You live across the street. You're okay with height. The way you're imagining it with Elizabeth and, and others is different um, than what you're seeing. Um, and 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 that 
uh, you would like to work with Canada Lands to help achieve your vision. Um, but if they can't do it, they can't do it. And you'll, you'll speak to your elected officials and others. Um, and you're worried about safety um, uh, and, and potentially other issues. We know, are you, are you, uh, thank you, Josie. And I just want to make sure I get you. Um, Rena, do you, uh, Josie wanted to turn it to you to also sort of um, explain your perspective. Um, do you wanna do you wanna jump in now? No, you know what? I think Josie has very well explained what a lot of us here are thinking of. Okay. So I would go more, you know, just saying more of the same thing. The only thing I wanted to ask was, will there be any changes? Would there be were any changes made or contemplated uh, as a result of these meetings that we had with the community? The changes to the plans that are being is being submitted, like based on this round of consultation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, James and 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 Donna, maybe um, there's uh, um, obviously uh, you've been making a big effort to connect what you're proposing to what we've been hearing. I know yeah. we still have follow up meetings um, with. Uh, Elizabeth, the York Center Steering Committee, Center Senior Steering Committee, um, you booked it today. Um, so presumably that'll be a conversation to be had. But Donna and James, are you planning on changing anything? Um, sure, sure, maybe. Yeah, yeah so maybe I, I think Rena's question was, have we changed anything since our stakeholder meetings? We had four stakeholder meetings last week with the two BIAs, with the York Center Senior St Steering Committee and with the Downsview Voice. Yep. Uh, so even the answer is before, James, even from before, from our initial, you know, you've had meetings with the community for what more than a year now, year and a half. Yes. yes. So was two of the input implemented? Yeah. So, we, so that we, was a big part of the the presentation. Um, so let's break the question down into two parts. One, how have you changed what you're doing now based on what people have said? And maybe that's just reiterating what was in the deck. And then the second thing is, how are you planning on using what you're hearing through this round of consultation? Sure. Uh, why, why don't I kick it off? And then maybe Donna can speak from a planning design perspective. But I, I think we've certainly uh, benefited from all of the discussions we've had with stakeholder groups, community members over the last year and a half, almost two years, Rena. And, you know, I think what sticks out to me is we heard the importance of uh, the seniors, the seniors component, you know, and, and we went and did a lot of market research around that and, and met with uh, not for profit and profit groups about seniors organizations and, and how they best are planned. We uh, did a lot of work on the retail commercial. I think, you know, through some of those meetings, especially with the voice, we were hearing the importance of mixed use utilizing those opportunities. Uh, we heard a, from a couple of the members of the voice about the importance of having a small grocery store. So we really did some work around that. Uh, I, th I think in terms of the design work, we we got a lot out of you know the importance of having not only the connections but designing them the right way. So separating pedestrians from cyclists, and, and especially when it comes time to seniors. I, I think another thing we really heard was the importance of the intergenerational aspect of the community. So having, you know, kids on the, you know, with respect to daycare and, and at the same time having seniors and having those interact and having community spaces that serve all of those. So for me, I, I think we've got some fantastic feedback. You know, all of you are super passionate and, and put in the time to give us great feedback. You know, some things that maybe we haven't thought of, you know, with respect to to some of the finer grain details. So I, I can say our, our plans evolved for sure. I think simplistically when I started this, you look at the, the city's land use plan and you say apartment neighborhoods, mixed use, and it's around a natural heritage and a park area, but there, there's so much more to it. Uh, so, so I think we've certainly benefited. And I think even, you know, I reflect on the meetings we had last week where, you know, guys like Anthony Rossi were talking about putting himself about how you cross that internal street and how it's designed and how it's safe. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And, and for me, those are key key elements. So I would say we're we're well underway at William Baker. You know, we're a couple of years in, but there's still a lot of work to do. And we'll continue to engage with you and continue to refine. Okay. 
All right. You know, there is another question I had. How many acres of woodlot do we have? Okay. How many acres of woodlot are uh, there? Um, I don't know if it's a Jim Dugan question or James, you want to jump in? Yeah, I, I can start off. I don't know if I, I know the exact number. The only thing I do know, and maybe Donna can bring up the, the aerial uh, showing the historical site, but you know, we're, we're looking to increase the size. Uh, we're looking to renaturalize areas where they formerly had military housing. There's some spots, right? If you imagine there's kind of the more significant north woodlot, and then there's the southern one, we're looking to link that north and that south and renaturalize it. Right now, as you can see in that aerial photograph, there was housing smack right in the middle of that. So you didn't have that connection in terms of the canopy and the wildlife and you have a real opportunity. We have a great opportunity to grow and enhance that woodlot. So that's that's the plan. I don't have the exact acreage for you, uh, but I can assure you, and I know the urban forestry guys are, are participating today and, and the council is very interested in how we improve uh, this forest and this woodlot. So we'll maintain and add to it. We, we will be adding to it. Good, good news, okay. I've heard once, I remember at the beginning of our meetings, around 20 acres. I mean, that might be a number that Donna or Jim can look up before our meeting is over. And if not, it's certainly something we can add to the meeting summary once we've got it. You know, Jim, Jim here, the, the northern woodlot is uh, four hectares approximately, and the southern one is uh, 0.8 of a hectare. And do you know what that is in acres, Jim? <laughs> I mean, the question was an acre, so um, yeah, we can do a quick conversion. It's two and a half times. Yeah, so. 20 acres around altogether. Yeah. 10 acres. It's 10. I mean, it's, it's, it's more like park. 10, right? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. It's 10 acres for the north one and about two acres for the south one. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the only um, uh, Victor, did you want to did you want to jump in at all and share any of your your thoughts? I think you're the only person we haven't heard from. It doesn't mean you you have to go, but I want to do make sure that we get to everybody um, to just make some space. Uh, which Victor are you talking to me or is another? You Victor? betcha. Yeah. Uh, okay, no, like, like it looks good. Uh, this is like a combination of uh, the the initial one or two, right? I see this yep. like a picture, like you keeping the uh, the connection to the park, and um, I see a couple of buildings like going towards the subway, and then towards the Kill and Shepherd. Those are gonna be the tall areas, right? Yep. And uh, when you say it's like uh, like 13 and more floors, you have anything in, in mind? Like, uh, I mean, like anything proposed, how many floors is going to be? Like 15, 16, or it's going to be like more than 20? James, you want to jump in? We had that question about height earlier too. It says 13 plus. Um, do you have a sense of how many floors that will be? We, we've been contemplating at the corner of Keel and Shepherd, somewhere in the neighborhood of that kind of 16 to 20. Okay. Uh, closer to the Downsview Park Station, I think something, you know, uh, around 20, 20 plus. So we're, you know, we're still early in the work. I mean, a lot of it for us is identifying the right mix of housing, the right mix of built form within the district plan, but operating within the city's plan in terms of density. Yeah, no, it looks, it looks, the plan looks good. Like I see, like, it has, it's, it's still keeping the green area, the woodlots, and then you're going to have like people, I like the connection is going to be like, uh, seats and chairs anything like any playgrounds around the area like uh where you're gonna be uh uniting the it's like a green area right between the buildings that's that's the plan we we have the central woodlot and the natural heritage in the parks area uh, which could have a bit of infrastructure but we've also identified uh, a central park at the north and then the one linking uh, the pedestrian bridge down to Downsview park so th there's opportunities we'll work with the city of toronto on where the right locations for playground and infrastructure is, but we'd really like to deliver on that. I think we've, you know, we've got some great playgrounds we've recently put in around the Downsview area and, and would like to continue that. Yeah, that sounds good. Right. 
Yeah, okay, thanks, Victor. Yeah. Thank you. Great, thanks. Rosanna. Uh, James, how far is the uh, subway from the uh, high density area? Uh, and I want to hear from the planners, Hector, Vincent, and Ben, what is the optimal distance that um, a community should be for, for it to be walkable to the subway? Good. So, uh, first off, um, and you're talking about the northeast corner of the site, Correct. right? Yeah. yeah. How far yeah. is that? that mixed use um, taller buildings up at the top uh, right of the of the map from the subway about and maybe we could bring up the map and just show people. Okay. Yeah, let me share it. Thanks, Donna. And then I can start. I would say that it's about uh, 250 meters from this area to the subway station, the GO station. Typically, as a metric, planners use about a 500 meter walk to transit stations as being as being one metric for them being easily accessible. So this is uh, this is relatively close. I don't and know Rosanna, if there was a, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, Rosanna, we used a, there was a, a context area we, we used in the past two phases of consultation that showed the the overall radius. Uh, one of the other ones is, I think, a thousand meters. So most of the site, I think, is is within that thousand meters. Oh, yeah. Stone, I said, yeah. You know, half of it within five hundred meters. So so certainly yeah. a walkable neighborhood, and then augmented by the bus service. Okay. Thanks, Donna. Thanks, James. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. I don't know if that's if the city folks, Ben, um, from the planning um, department's perspective, if that if that uh, if you have anything you want to add to that. So generally for transit oriented developments, Rosanna, we look at the 500 and 800 radius uh, as, as making a transit oriented development. This certainly falls with well within uh, the lower end of that. I want to say something, Ben, though. When we did the, the secondary plan, the killer shepherd was part of, um, they said, well, the intensification is because it's you can walk to the subway. So even a killer shepherd, then it's part of that because the intensification is pretty high. What and what do you mean exactly, Josie? Do you mean Pickle. that is Keel and Shepherd a transit oriented development um, location? Right. I don't know if Donna or James is is want to weigh in on that. So, so am I? Are you still seeing my screen? No. Or, okay. Let me just share it again if i'm understanding your question so right now we know there are a lot of bus services right here where my cursor is and i'm just going to draw a circle this well let's say within this neighborhood focus area this is about 150 meters so to get to this intersection this is 150 meters so it's no, very accessible is no, that what you're asking uh, Secondary plan, we were talking about the distance from Killer Shepherd to the subway. Oh, from here to, to here. The okay. They said you can walk there. That's why it's more, there is oh. a vacation there, but it doesn't look like, and there's still a lot of units at the bottom. Okay, so Josie, you're concerned that the people that are living on the south end of the site. Are not within 800 meters of the of no. the of the subway. That it might be too They're still far to walk. Bus. Okay. Yeah, Nicole. Um, just to clarify, I mean the the south the phase one lands are are within approximately 800 to 1,000 meters of the of the Damsey Park subway station. So it is. Enough. You know, it is walkable. I mean, it's it's outside of the 500 meters. The the most walkable would be. You know, and, and the most density should arguably be next to the Downsview Park station, but it is a walkable area. But what I, that's what I'm trying to tell you here because I did, I was part of the secondary plan. I went for a month to North York, and this was, was a big, big uh, issue because if I live at Killer Shepherd, it's not the same to live over there. Why the intensification is not there more than here? We still don't understand. Well, let me let me just remind everybody this dark brown is the high density residential as well. So it's a similar condition where we're trying to get as many people living close to the subway and go station as we can. Hence the dark brown. 
and the medium, the mid-rise building. So there will be a lot of people living here, a stone's throw from the subway and go station. This is like 250 meters. And we've done that precisely to get as many people as we can living close to them. And that's it. Okay. Um, it sounds like there might be some concern that maybe in previous processes, when the city decided that there would be um, high rise at Keel and Shepherd, maybe that was where there was a difference of opinion with the community. But that's but, now, I think that that's long, long, long gone. Right. One doesn't obviate the other. Just because we have high density at Keel and Shepherd doesn't mean that we can't have higher density up at the northeast corner as well. So they are supportive, mutually supportive. And just to provide a little bit of context, when, when I walk from the Downsview Park Station to the, the project office in the Downsview Hub, so if, if Donna, you can put your icon on that, at the, that black building oh, south, yeah. of, uh, south of Shepherd, that's roughly 12 to 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm looking, it's 853. Um, we have some people that are very happy with um, what you've shared, um, have some good questions about things to think about and advice for the future. Also, uh, concern, it sounds like from, from at least Josie and Rena that this is not handling seniors um, the way that they envisioned. And it's a, it's a question of safety and, and potentially some other issues. Um, but I know that we do have a follow-up meeting booked with the York Centre Senior Steering Committee to try and really understand what it is that they think can't happen with what's been proposed here. And, and so that's booked for um, early December now um, because um, we wanna make sure that we really understand what it is about what's being proposed um, that uh, doesn't work um, for what you had, uh, what you had envisioned. Um, so, I mean, maybe I'll just do a last call if there are any other comments or questions from people who haven't, uh, I don't have them all out of their system, and and then I'll I'll turn it to James to wrap up. But, but I I wanted to hear from James and Donna if uh, definitely if we would like to make some changes after today's meeting, and to you know to include the vision more kind of organic vision of for life for seniors we believe we have. So how you will accommodate our changes in your process. So you're going to have some future feedback for them to consider and, and whether you'll consider it or how you will consider it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So coming out of the, the stakeholder group meetings we held last week, and then we we've held two sessions today, this one this evening and one this afternoon. Uh, Swarhan, who are our independent community consultation and facilitation experts, they they record uh, these meetings and they make notes. And, and so for us, we reflect back on what we've heard and we take those under advisement. We work with the planning partnership. We work with our technical team. We engage with the city of Toronto and we determine ultimately where we think it is best to kind of refine the plan based on those comments and based on that balance of comments. The other thing, Elizabeth, we as Elizabeth, or sorry, as Nicole mentioned, We've got the meeting scheduled with you on, on December 3rd, so we'll have a chance to really get into some of those details uh, around seniors and, and providing for their safety. So I suspect uh, you know, that feedback from that meeting will get reflected into our, our preferred plan that will be subject to the application submission to the city. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned early on, I mean, we're, you know, we'll make that application early in 2021 and there's a, another fulsome process, you know, of engagement, community meetings, uh, technical comments, not just from uh, city staff, but working with our technical team. So there's uh, all hands on deck, you know, we'll continue the dialogue with you and, and other groups and people and continue to refine and make this the best plan. So I know James, but you know, the reality would work for us this way if we are working with nonprofit seniors provider, as you know, because we mentioned to you Bakerist. They have a tremendous global international recognition. And you know, obviously what they are saying to us and we, when we will be working, my point is that maybe we'll end up with something what you will be surprisingly seeing 
And my question is, as a result, my question is how elastic this meeting outcomes can be for us after. So, um, maybe talk about the order of events, James. Is it something where you like make a deal with a non one particular nonprofit in advance of having a district plan, um, or is it something that the district plan can accommodate? Maybe it's it's not only for Elizabeth, but I think everybody would appreciate understanding sort of what decisions happen when and how you make them. Yep. No, it, it's a great question for us. The the importance is that we work with the community. We're identifying the vision. We're establishing a district plan and a land use plan that accommodates for that vision, provides the land use uh, to allow the market to deliver on that vision. In, in terms of our work with Canada Lands, we we don't do any side deals. We don't do one off deals. We, you know, we take our our, our opportunities to the market. And we do expression of interests. Um, you know, there there will be. I suspect a number of different players involved in this profit, not for profit, and we'll, you know, we'll be going out to the market at the right time. But for us, there's importance in going through this process first, securing the approvals for the district plan, the rezoning, and, and the draft plan, the subdivision, so people have clarity in terms of what's being delivered. And, and there'll be, you know, we expose the properties and the opportunities to the marketplace, so there will be. Uh, that opportunity for for anyone to be involved. That's perfect. And about the woodland, uh, would you make any you know uh, decisions and dealing with city because this woodland around twenty acres or less will be managed in the future by the city, as and as I understand. So how we and users can see ourselves using this beautiful land safe for us, not only as a lying down piece of grass, but really invested with serious infrastructure for seniors and for youth, obviously, at the same time. But you know, how we can be make sure, how we can make sure that we are today putting, you know, in motion what we need to say so that we will be feeling uh, later that you know this beautiful woodland saved by you uh, by Donna is actually works for us. I, I think Elizabeth a great question and I, I know that's uh, you know a big interest of a lot of people for, for me it's doing what you're doing providing these kind of comments weighing in in terms of your vision for the woodlot how you think it should be preserved how you think it should be enhanced through trails you know other infrastructure I think is perfect. And a kind of lands, you know, key objective for us is is enhancing this woodlot and preserving it. So I think, you know, for me that's important. But the other piece you've got, and and the councilor is part of this meeting, he's brought with him his staff in urban forestry. So the city's looking at this as well. And I think between these two groups, you're very much going to get a, a wonderful preserve woodlot and enhance woodlot. Uh, but I would say, you, you know, in terms of that detail continue to, to work with us and provide us that feedback. It's, it's great. Thank you. Okay, I see nine o'clock, it's good timing. Um, if anybody has anything else they have to get in before we, we wrap up the meeting, then, then now's your moment. Um, otherwise, uh, James has always um, made the point that our window for feedback is open for probably about another month. Um, and uh, all the contact information and materials will be on the website. Um, so, uh, anybody else want to jump in? Otherwise, I'm gonna gonna hand it over to uh, James to wrap up. Go, Vincent. Sorry, just one last question, real quick. I brought this up earlier today uh, about the location. You're breaking up slightly. You're talking about the location of the community center. General location. Um, you know, it is it is uh like it's like area. Vincent. Yeah, sorry. 
you broke up totally. Turn your camera off, make the comment again. I, we really missed it almost totally. Sorry, I, I missed that. Turn Damn. your camera off and, and repeat the, <laughs> can you turn your camera off and repeat the point? Sure. We, we missed you almost totally. I'm so sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's perfect, way better, right. thank you. Excellent. Sorry about that. Okay, I'll be very quick. Um, so earlier, I asked about the location of the community center, um, and I were very, uh, very helpful in telling me that uh, that it, the place where it's planned for that that is the preferred location. But that location does seem a bit ambiguous from the slides. Uh, on one slide, it shows like a circle for the general area, uh, like basically right at the corner. Another slide, it shows it further off to the east. I would just like to know, what is the um, full area for the preferred location? Uh, like, what are the borders? Just so I can be a bit more specific. Is that something you've got, James, at this moment? No, so it's a great question, Vincent. At this time, uh, we don't have the specific boundaries defined, and that's ultimately, it's a, it's a city facility. My understanding is they still need to settle on the location. We've offered the land for that uh, community center, uh, but there's still a little bit of work to do uh, from a city level. So that's why we've shown it in terms of a general location. We didn't want to, and I think the councilor's being careful with this. Uh, we don't want to indicate that it's, it's a done deal and uh, have people get excited about it. We wanna be, you know, we wanna champion it, we want people to support it and we want to do the work that's associated with it, but we also don't want to sit there and pretend we've got uh, a, you know, a building design and a building footprint that's ready to go. Of course, I understand, but um, I was more talking about the, there is a preferred location uh, and that's generally where it is. But um, uh, when you were uh, consulting with uh, uh, the counselor or with the city or whomever, and you decided on that preferred location, what was the terminology? Was it like the southeast corner of Keel and Shepherd? Was it uh, north of the Discovery Center? Was it southeast of William Baker? Like, where's, can you be a little bit more specific on where the preferred location is? Right, so so Vincent, I'm gonna turn it over to the city and, and maybe if uh, either Ben or the counselor would like to tackle this one, because uh, as I mentioned, it is a city facility. And it's ultimately up to the city to determine that location. But Canada Land's offer was generally on that corner, James? Correct. Okay. I don't know if Councillor Pasternak or Ben, do you have any comments on the on um, location? I, I would just I would just add that um, under the secondary plan, it was it was always kind of envisioned that it would be uh, around Keel and Shepherd. Um, and and that's where Canada Land sort of initially promised uh, the the land, uh, and and uh, when I you know when I sort of took over the file uh, two years ago, um, there really wasn't much done. Uh, there was really no design work, um, and it wasn't on the City of Toronto capital plan. So uh, we've moved as aggressively as we can to push uh, for the design work and to get it on the City of Toronto capital plan. Um, the William Baker um, development alone would probably not carry the cost, but the William Baker uh, development along with um, what's planned on the old Bombardier lands may be able to um, uh, may be able to envision uh, or, or produce a, a community center. The other thing is, if with this kind of density, if this density was downtown, they'd get a community center and an aquatic center. Um, we're really, we're really far behind, and and it's really an essential piece to make a complete community. It basically you can't build without without a commitment that it's going to be built as well. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, I think this was exactly uh, the kind of discussion we wanted to have. Um, I think um, some nice probing questions um, with some uh, important things to to think about, um, whether that would have been early in the night, um, thinking about how to ensure that uh, 
Uh, there are strategies to attract affordable um, amenities or retail. Um, talked um, about uh, traffic and connections and the separation of different users, um, whether it's cyclists or pedestrians and exactly where roads are connecting. So we, got, we covered a bit of that. We talked about the total number of units and the phasing um, and um, whether the infrastructure would be in place. Um, uh, and um, talked a little bit um, about uh, the, um, uh, the seniors piece and uh, needing to revisit the vision that some in the community have that they're not sure can be delivered um, uh, by the way the district plan was presented here. And we have a follow-up meeting for that. Um, and uh, obviously the comment from Kevin about not wanting to see any new Catholic school undermine the success of an existing Catholic school. Um, and then others who uh, thought that the presentation um, looked good, made a lot of sense. Um, and um, and uh, kind of a mix of people who had participated before and who hadn't. So, I mean, that's exactly what the public consultation process is intended to do. We're um, going to write a summary and send it to all of you in draft for your review. Um, and uh, as we would have done with all the other meetings, um, some of you uh, will be receiving some summaries from those very shortly for your review. Um, and, uh, and that's really our jobs, uh, our team's role, um, but ultimately it's uh, Canada Lands that's uh, running the process. And so James, I'll, I'll turn the last word over, over to you. Sure, thanks, Nicole. I uh, just really wanted a chance to thank everybody for your time tonight. I mean, some, some very thoughtful questions, some comments, uh, you know, challenging us in, in some great ways. And I think ultimately, as I said, will help us in, in refining and, and coming up with a great plan. Also want a chance to thank the councillor and his staff for attending. Uh, I know they're very busy, so appreciate the commitment to this file and, and to the various meetings and to city staff as well. Uh, I know especially going you know, above and beyond in terms of your normal work day. So uh, thank you to everybody and uh, look yeah. forward to continuing work with you. Nicole, if I could just um, also uh, echo those comments and thank everybody for, for participating tonight to giving a part of your evening uh, to help um, envision how these lands are going to be built out uh, to raise uh, concerns and to help shape it. And uh, as I mentioned at the top of the meeting, if there's anything that comes to mind afterwards that uh, needs clarity or you forgot to ask, you can always you can always call uh, my office and we'll help out uh, with I think Adam, I Tacken and Hector are still on the line. So we're, we're there to watch this project to protect the neighborhood. And to make sure that if it goes forward, that the, the community assets that we've long wanted will be built. So, thank you very much for participating. Thanks, everybody. Have a safe night. Um, looking forward to staying in touch. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.